What up, gang? It's Ken Zerk, Ken Zerk, Ken Zerk, Ken Zerk, Ken Zerk, Ken We are back on Fate Stay Night. Last episode, um... Last episode was our first day as Shiro Emiya. We did day one of the Fate Route, and now we're entering day two of the Fate Route. Load the save file. Oh, um... Last episode, I tried out something new with my editing style. I put it in the description, but at there, there were some points where I, like, kind of... What it is, I, I kind of, what you call, it, I slowed down some of my dialogue when I thought it would be funny. So just tell me how y'all think about that. I think it was pretty funny, but let me know how y'all feel, right? I awake to darkness. I guess I'm not much for dreaming, unless something big happens. I always have the same dream anyway. I always envision a sword. I have no idea why, but that's the only thing that pops into my head. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Perhaps this is what defines me as, well, me as Shiro Emiya. I don't have any dreams of my own. The only thing on my mind while I sleep are what others taught me long ago. For example, on how to be a mage. Even if I'm not a full-fledged mage, it's only natural for a mage to be aware of the world they're in. Put simply, a mage is an irregular, an outcast from society. But even outcasts need to band together to survive. My old man told me there was a society of mages called the Mage Asso Association. He also told me I shouldn't ever get involved with them. The Mages Association is said to conceal the existence of magecraft and manage mages. The Mages Association watches over mages and makes sure their magecraft doesn't affect society. But the strange thing is, they don't really prohibit mages from abusing magecraft either. According to Kiritsugu, the Mages Association is only interested in concealing mystics. Even if, say, a mage carried out an experiment that sacrificed, let's say, a lot of citizens, the association wouldn't punish them. Their priorities are expressly in preventing the public from being aware of magecraft, which does not mean magecraft is completely banned. Honestly, anything goes as long as the truth doesn't come out. At least that seems to be how that insane bunch of conducts how that sit out in the same bunch conducts themselves. Whatever it is, the Mage Association surveillance is absolute. Typical Magecraft research sacrifices the lives of ordinary humans, which in turn risks revealing the existence of Magecraft to the world. As such, the Mage Association doesn't permit research that would harm society. Ultimately, Mages conduct their research in their privacy, in their privacy of their homes while the world is none the wiser. So mages sometimes go into hiding to escape the association's scrutiny and oversight. So there may be some mages living in this town and I just don't know it. I also hear Fuyuki is a spiritual hotspot of sorts. That probably means there's some prestigious mage with storied history living here. Does bro know? They're called second owners. Elite mages the association entrusts with entrust entrusts to watch over the ter territory. Other mages who live in the same area must visit these second owners first to get permission to build their workshops. My old man was an outlaw who cut ties with the association and moved here without the consent of Fuyuki's second owner. So in a way, our family is a bunch of trespassers living in a house without permission from the landlord. Which means the second owner doesn't know that Kiritsugu Emiya was a mage. So I tend to feel like our family status as mages is kind of unclear. But then my old man, the bona fide mage, died. And even though I'm his disciple and son, I don't know a thing about the mage's association. I have no real knowledge about being a mage. I have a feeling the association would want to dispose of someone like me, but they haven't made any sort of move. Apparently the mage's association doesn't have many eyes in Japan, so that's probably why I haven't been found yet. But that doesn't mean I can let my guard down. But that doesn't mean I can let my guard down. The eyes of the Mages Association are said to be everywhere, and if someone commits a crime using Magecraft, the church's heretic hunters will make their move. Using Magecraft, however half-sap you may be about it, makes you enemies. So with all that in mind, I honestly just want to study being a mage on my own. Ugh, hmm. I wake up as the sunlight starts to pour through the window. Bro woke up early as fuck. Looks like the sun is just now coming up. It's still dark out. 
Mm, it's cold. Waking up in the morning is getting tough. I get up, trying not to let the morning cold discourage me, and quickly fold up my futon. It's 5.30. I've always been an early riser. No matter how late I go to bed, I might mess up once in a while, like yesterday, but that's rare. Okay, breakfast. I let Sakura do all the work yesterday, so it would look kind of bad if I didn't return the favor this morning. I should hurry up and finish making breakfast before Sakura comes. I cook rice and make miso soup. Yesterday the soup had daikon, radish, and carrots, so I'm making onion and potato miso soup today. I make the egg omelette and use the leftover konyaku to simmer it with bonito flakes. He think he... Inumaki. I make incisions into the sari fish, which will be the main dish, bars, and sprinkle a little salt on that bitch. All I gotta do is broil it, but that can wait until the last minute. Okay, that'll do. It's almost six. I finished earlier than expected, so I have some time on my hands. So what should I do with this extra time? Beat your dick. Oh, guess I'll work up a quick sweat if I have so much time. Morning exercise is my daily routine, so I might as well do some light workouts. There's a respectable dojo built in the Emiya house. It, nigga, we did, we, I know that, I know, I know that. We already went through this. It was added as sort of an afterthought when the house was constructed, which is why this dojo wasn't built for a specific purpose. Well, Fujine uses it on a whim sometimes. Fujine apparently used this place as their payground before I even came to this house. But then I became Kirisuku's disciple and started using this place more often. Fujine hated me for that for a while. Anyway, there's only one thing I do here. Training to be a mage means I can't neglect to train my body. One of the conditions of being a mage is by training yourself at your physical peak. When Kirisuga was alive, he and I sparred often. Well, more than, more that, he just, well, more that he just kicked my ass every time. So I never really learned how to win myself. But at least I learned the difference between a fight and a battle. In other words, I learned the difference between killing and beating an opponent and how to conduct myself in each situation. Knowledge and experience are different. Without the knowledge to know the difference, it's hard to tell if you've gotten yourself into a fight or a massacre. It's as simple as that. Learning magecraft means that there's a risk of per perishing on your own, as well as a risk of having to fight. And to mages, that means killing each other. That's why Kirisuka wanted to teach me that I must always be ready to face death. But the person reminding me of that lesson is long gone. So the only thing I can do now is some simple exercises. Stretching, push-ups, sit-ups. It's no different than what the members of the Kudo Club do in the morning. The only difference is in the intensity. Okay, let me get some water. Why is she looking at me like that? She don't look very happy. Good morning, senpai. Did you finish preparing breakfast already? Yeah, it's all done. All that's left to do is the dishes and grill the fish. Oh, I'll help. Leave the dishes to me. Sakura is clearly eager in her reply and coming in behind the ever-dependable Sakura is this motherfucker. Woo! I smell Shiro's omelet, so he handled breakfast this morning, huh? Fujine casually heads to the table. Well, let's just ignore that motherfucker for now. I need to grill the prepared fish. Sakura, use the middle set of plates. The food would look better on those. The plates with the bumps on the surface? Yeah, those. Grilled meals tend not to, tend not to look so good if you don't plate them well. I've already grated the daikon. Sakura reaches far out to take the plates. As she reaches out, I think I see a faint bruise on the back of her hand. Sakura, hold on a minute. Yes, what is it? The fuck happened in your hand? She averts her eyes, looking uneasy. 
Her reaction makes how she got the bruise somehow. Somehow, fuck. Her reaction makes the makes how she got the bruise clear. That motherfucker hitting her. That motherfucker. <laughs> bitch ass nigga. Not only are you hitting women, but you hitting your own little sister. You a nah. I knew that nigga was a bitch. I knew that nigga was a bitch. Is it Shinji again? I can't believe he beats his own sister. That's not it. Um, well, I got this when I fell. You know how clumsy I- Shut that shit up, lying ass. How the fuck he over here hitting his sister, bitch ass nigga? I should go over there and hit his ugly ass. I'm always falling and getting myself hurt. Do you think I'm stupid? Nobody gets bruises like that from falling. Seems like I need to beat the shit out of Shinji. No, senpai. My brother really has nothing to do with this. I just hurt myself, so there's no reason for you to get angry for me. Sakura falls silent. Sakura may seem docile, but she's surprisingly stubborn. It's no use saying anything to her now. Don't say shit! Walk over there and whoop his ass! Fine, if you say so, I'll leave it at that. What I would say if I was a little bitch, I'm finna go beat his ass. Yes, I'm sorry, senpai. What are you apologizing for? Shinji's in the wrong. The moment I say Shinji's name, Sakura awkwardly walks away. It can only mean he is the cause of the bruise on her hand. Shinji Mato has a bad habit of treating his younger sister like crap. I noticed it about a year ago. Every now and then I see Sakura injured, and she always makes excuses when I ask about what happened. When I asked Shinji about it, he revealed to my shock that he'd been the one who hit Sakura. I asked why, and he told me it was because she'd done something he hadn't liked. I got pretty pissed off, so I did to Shinji what he'd done to Sakura. We haven't been on great terms since then. Senpai, have you made up with my brother? I'm not about to make up with nobody that hits their sister. That's bullshit. Fuck that nigga. Uh, yeah, sure. We never fought in the first place, so there's not much to call. There's not much call for making up. That may be how you see it, but my brother doesn't see it the same way. He thinks you're still fighting, so you should be careful. When Sakura set, what Sakura says strikes me as odd. Be careful of Shinji. Yes, he's angry with you. And I hear he was the very reason why you quit the club. Shinji had nothing to do with me quitting. Well, he might have been a factor, but it's nothing you should worry about. And Shinji's right, this is a little unsightly. I'll point at my left shoulder. There's a little scar there. It happened about a year and a half ago. Something fell on me during one of my jobs, injuring my left shoulder. I ended up with just a broken bone, but I also came away with a burn on my shoulder. After the accident, I quit the Kudo Club. Our school's Kudo Club, out of respect for our formalities, allows students to perform sacred shooting rituals. Male students participate in this exposed. Male students participating in this exposed their left shoulder. Shinji pointing out, pointed out that it may be disrespectful for someone performing a sacred shot to expose a scar. Since then, I was getting busy with my various jobs, so I decided to quit the club. Uh, Bitch. Senpai, I may ask this often, but are you ever going to shoot are you never going to shoot again? Miss Fujimura even said your injury shouldn't affect your performance. Man, Fujimura would say that even if I broken every bone in my body. Senpai, I'm being serious. Damn. Like she finna claw my fucking throat out. Calm down. I know I should give her a serious answer, but unfortunately, I can't give Sakura the answer she's looking for. I don't have time to do club activities. I like Kudo, but it's not something I should prioritize, so I think I'll give it a rest for a while. How long is a while? However long I feel like. Or maybe until it's time for you to graduate. I'm looking forward to having you look after me then, Sakura. I pat Sakura's shoulder. Okay, I'll be waiting when that time comes. She nods so violently it looks like she might drop the plates.
It's almost half past seven. Sakura and Fujine have long since left the house and for their morning club activities. I went to school early yesterday because Issei asked me to, but I leave the house at the usual time today. Watch Ilya pull back up. She's like, did you summon yet, little boy? You're going to die if you don't hurry. Why did I make it sound like the Wicked Witch of the West? Mm -hmm. I noticed something strange as I walked down the hill toward the intersection. Several police cars are parked inside of a house. Something must have happened. Since a crowd has gathered, there are easily 20 people watching. I'm curious, but the mass of people prevents me from finding out what's happening. I don't have my time, so I should hurry to school. Damn, somebody got clapped the fuck up. They got clapped up, smacked up, dapped up, and backed up. I make the school 10 minutes before the first bell. You better damn hurry. Shit. You see how far away that shit is? You better run. As I cross through the gate with plenty of time as usual. Me, Suzuri. Hey, ya. morning, Emiya. Hold on. That shit hard, I'm not gonna lie. I run into a familiar student. You haven't cha you haven't even changed yet, Mr. Zuri? Homeroom's about to start. You really not have to come say hi to me. You're absolutely right. Matter of fact, as always, Emiya. I don't know what the hell is so funny, but she laughs heartily, not caring about her surroundings. This is Ayako Misuzuri. She's been a classmate of mine since we were first years, and she's currently the captain of the Kudo Club. She's an unbelievably insightful person. It was expected that she would be the team's next captain since her first, since her first year with them. Misuzuri is the precautious sort, and people have always had high hopes for her and even leaned on her ever since she was a first year. Then again, she gets mad whenever someone mentions that in front of me, claiming she doesn't look as old as people think. Huh? Were you just thinking something bad about me? I wouldn't dare. Just making an astute observation. You want to get mad about it? That's your call. You don't say. That may be your honest answer, but you never say out loud what's really getting that head of yours. Cause unlike Shinji, you never let your true self show. This nigga has not played Persona 4. <laughs> Shinji? Fuck that ugly ass nigga gotta do with this. No matter how much either of you protest, you and Shinji are friends. I'm not friends with nobody that beat their sister. You're his only male friend. And let me remind you that I'm the captain of the Kudo Club. Isn't it only natural for me to associate our club's troublemaker with our former troublemaker? I guess. The Kudo Club's got nothing to do with it, but he and I go back a long way. Ha. I see you just got ticked off. You always get frosted whenever the Kudo Club gets mentioned. You sure had some guts quitting and leaving Shinji behind, you know? Did you not consider how the other people you left behind might feel? Like Sakura and me? What? Did Shinji do something bad again? We never have a day he doesn't do something. But he might have gone a bit too far yesterday. He made a first year guy quit. Misuzuri sighs gravely. Seeing her look so serious is ready to begin with, but the rest of her story is particularly alarming. The fuck? Why'd he quit? Shinji took his anger out on him. He forced all the female members and made the first year, who barely learned how to handle a bow, shoot his bow until he hit the target. Shinji mocked him the whole time. This nigga is a bitch! What? How could you let something like that happen? I would never let that happen. But a captain's got a lot to do, you know? You know very well I don't live in the damn dojo. Well, yeah, but what the hell was Shinji thinking? He may be harsher than the others, but he's not the type to make someone into a spectacle. Listen to you. You're something, Emiya. What do you mean by that? Hey, were you just thinking something bad about me? I wouldn't dare. Just make it an observation. If you want to get angry about it, that's your call, pussy. You fuck. Using my own words against me. All right, then. 
Fine, what's God in the Shinji? Why'd he do that? I heard Toshaka shot him down pretty brutally. Oh, he's mad about that. Tosaka? You mean that Tosaka? You know any other Tosakas in your school? A second year honor student in class A, Miss Perfect, Ren Tosaka. Well, that's the first time I've heard that nickname. But it fits. No surprise Shinji got rejected. He's a bitch. And she's bad as fuck. And knowing Tosaka, she probably has some pretty harsh insults to go with the rejection. Anyway, Shinji's been acting out, acting out since yesterday. And that's why I've had to watch him like a hawk at the dojo up until now. Shinji does have low tolerance for some things. I know it might be rough, but good luck, Misuzuri. Just kick the nigga out the club! Yeah, yeah. But you know how Shinji never lets go of anything. I'm just afraid he might do something bad next time he asks Osaka and gets rejected again. No, even Shinji wouldn't go after wouldn't go near someone who just rejected him. He's good about that sort of thing. But what if the person who turned him down comes near him instead? I don't know why, but Tosaka swings by the dojo to come watch. Oh well. You quit, so you probably don't know that. Nigga, you do know why. That's your friend! You be inviting her! The fuck you talking about? You don't know why! Lion ass. That's news to me. Rento Saka doesn't participate in any fucking hell. Rento Saka doesn't participate in any club activities because her family forbids it or something. She even turned down nominations to be a member of the student council. So I always thought she went straight home after school. I guess this isn't horrible once in a while. He's always acting high and mighty, so it might be good for him to struggle for once. Sorry, but not sorry. Misuzuri has a weird way of looking at this. I personally think we should kill the nigga. Now that I think about it, they say Rento Sok has a lot of enemies. I wonder if Misuzuri is one of them too. Hey, Misuzuri, that's kind of cruel even for you. Oh, it's almost time. See you later, Emiya. You should swing by and see my boat work next time. Misuzuri hastily runs off. Classic Misuzuri. I'm never minded just how forthright she always is. I feel a bit more at ease and head toward the classroom. Can I drink? Can I drink? Are you gonna let me drink? It's lunchtime. A school that's quite the cafeteria. This is not a fucking cafeteria. You know damn well this isn't a cafeteria. Our school has quite the cafeteria. Most students eat lunch there. But there are some old-fashioned students who still bring their lunches, including myself and the student council president sitting in front of me. I was finna say, I was finna say, bro, like, you know damn well this ain't no cafeteria. Emiya, can I have some of your fried chicken? My lunch is kind of lacking in protein. Fine, but why is your lunch always so plain, he say? I know you live in a temple, but there's no rule that prohibits you from consuming alcohol or meat, right? Absolutely not. That idea is anachronic, anachron anachronistic. This is just how my father does things. According to him, a young priest shouldn't indulge himself in luxuries. And if I want to complain, I should do something about it. So I'm actually considering joining the circus one of these days. <laughs> that sounds like your old man. Issei's father is a priest at the Ryodo Temple, a larger-than-life figure who's also friends with Fujinate's grandfather. Anyone who gets along with old man Fujimura can't possibly be normal. Well then, here you go, you owe me. I pass my bento box to him. Ah, uh, much thanks. This is pretty much begging for alms. Issei bows deeply. I used to have a bento box. I forgot. Okay, okay, I remember what happened to it. I remember what happened to it. Okay. I had, when I had a bento box, and I had just recently started taking my lunch to school, right? So, I had a good amount of food in there. I had some, I had some fried rice, and I had some chicken I had cooked, right? And I don't remember what else I had. I know there was fried rice. I know there was chicken. I can't think of what else, but I had that, and I ate my food. Food was good as fuck. It was good as shit. What happened again? 
Oh yeah, okay, I put the, I have a habit of leaving things in my book bag and forgetting them. So my bento box, I put my bento, I put the bento box in my book bag after I finished eating. And I like, I, I, I completely forgot it was in there. So when I pulled it out, it, I opened it up and it smelled like butt ass, right? So like, no matter how much I cleaned it, nothing, like, I, like nothing I did would get that smell out of there, bro. And it was like, I guess I'll just never use it again. I honestly question whether I should be reminded that he's a son of a priest at times like this. Oh, by the way, did you hear about the commotion in the second district around the intersection where you or I part ways going home? The intersection? Could it be the same intersection where I saw the police cars this morning? Apparently there was a murder there. I don't know the details, but one of the but only one child out of a family of four survived. Both parents and the older sister were stabbed to death by some sort of long weapon instead of a typical knife. Oh shit, is it Lancer? Is Lancer the murderer? Like, is this nigga Lancer just running or is this nigga Lancer just running around stabbing niggas? Oh my goodness, asshole! A long weapon? Does it mean a sword or something? If it's a murder, then that weapon killed the parents and the older sister. I can't help but imagine it. Someone sneaks into the house late at night. Unreasonable violence. A horrible nightmare. The victim neither imagined nor wished for. Like a traffic accident. The parents are slaughtered. The older sister falls victim without knowing what is happening. A lone child hidden in the shadows is covered in their family's blood. Issei, did they catch the murderer? Doesn't look like it. Accidents stemming from faulty construction in Shinto. And now a murder. Or now a murder with something like a sword here. It's no wonder the school curfew is... No wonder the school curfew was... Er What's wrong, Gemiye? Did you choke on your lunch? Uh, nothing. Why do you ask? Well, you had a stern look on your face, which surprised me. Sorry, I should have bring this up while we're eating. Issei apologizes and tries to lighten the mood. I actually don't mind topics like this and didn't realize I was looking so severe. Then does that mean that... Fucker. Does that fucker? Does that fucker? Hold on, I'm trying to think. Does that mean that, um... The, the gas leaks aren't actually gas leaks? And it's like Lancer and his master putting up the the little barrier thing that Tosaka was talking about with the property, like making the property something like fucking die or some shit. Who the fuck is at the door? And then it's a I'm sorry if I cuss a lot. I really like to. I really like saying bad words. I really like to. And then there's a gentle knock on the Suda Council's room door. This nigga. This scary person. Sorry, is Ryudo here? Uh, yes. What is it, sir? Mr. Kuzuki answers. The and Issei steps over him to have a over to have a class conversation. It must be a casual student council matter since Issei looks relaxed. Look at that. Something I don't see every day. It. Something I don't see every day. He says surprisingly shy. He keeps his distance from classmates and even teachers. But for some reason, he's warmed up to the student council advisor, Mr. Kuzuki. Maybe they get along because they're both straight-laced. So Arichiro Kuzuki is the homeroom teacher for class 2A. And he's very serious and kind of weird. Some part of that is probably why he and Issei get on so well. The two continue to talk. As I watch them, I can't stop thinking about the murder. Class is in and it's time to go home. I can't wander around because I have work today. I shouldn't do anything at school. I should head straight to the neighboring town, but... Maybe the morning conversation bothered me more than I realized. Next thing I know, I'm at the Kyoto Club. Uh, what the hell am I thinking? Misuzuri said Rento Soccer frequently visits. 
Well, that, I haven't thought of that. But I think it'd be a problem if Shinji got violence against Osaka. Shinji's unstoppable when he gets mad. Shinji lashing out at Osaka because she rejected him would be bad. Well, I don't exactly know how, but it should be bad. Oh, Tosaka's not even here. Tosaka's nowhere to be found around the dojo. Misuzu worried for nothing. Who's not? Who's that? Who's not here? Ah, oh, shit. Oh, it's him. I'm asking. Who's not here? Issei, who I thought I'd parted ways with, is standing right in front of me. Right next to me. Hey, why are you here, Issei? Don't scare me like that. I saw you snooping around the dojo and couldn't help but come check it out. So, who are you saying is not here? Well, it's Tosaka. I heard she had a spat with Shinji yesterday, so I wanted to make sure things were okay. Is that so? Giving up more information than you have to... Giving up more information than you have to is kind of suspicious for you. I only asked you who, is, who wasn't here. What? Man, it's none of your business what I do around here. Mm -hmm. But it's pointless, Emiya. Tosaka isn't here. She cut class today. Oh yeah, she stayed. Yeah, she stayed home on the second day, and she was wandering around with Lance, with not Lance, with Archer. Yeah, she was. She was. She was wandering around with Archer. What? Cut class, so she's absent. I see. Wait, Issei, why do you think she cut class? That's not the sort of thing she'd ever do. Of course she would. She's not the type to ever get sick. If you want to know what I think, she's bad. Don't let her looks fool you, Emiya, or she'll swallow you whole. Somehow what Issei's saying irritates me. May not know Tosaka that well, but I don't think she's a bad person. Watch what you say, Issei. You know Tosaka's not like that. Have you got a secret crush on Tosaka too? My apologies. If so, forget what I said. Fucker. A secret crush? Like how? Hold on. A secret crush? Like how? Hey, nigga, don't make assumptions. I'm just worried Shinji's gonna stir up some trouble. So you came here to sweep in and stop Shinji from attacking Tosaka. You really were gonna take on some dirty work for nothing. It's not my place to say this, but you got bad taste in me. I'm unscathed so far because nothing happened. But he said, what was that crap you were saying? What? That about having the house for Tosaka is in bad taste? Yeah, that. Tosaka is popular. I haven't heard any bad rumors about it. No, you haven't. And that's what bothers me. What part bothers you? Everything about her. That woman's a vixen, a minx, a monster. Anyway, I instinctually dislike her. My advice to you is to not fall for her. You're the one who always warns everyone not to talk about people behind their back. Oh, for, come on. This hardly counts as gossip. I'm even talking loud enough for others to hear. No wonder I sense people watching us. Well, that's a relief. I'm really glad Tosaka's absent today. Issei, please. Can we talk a little quieter? <laughs> if you say so, understood. But I'll have you know that my words are hardly slander. I just wanted you to know that I'm wary of Rin Tosaka. Everything I said is just my own personal opinion. Yet you use words like vixen and minx. I'm pretty sure minx is definitely a derogatory term. Don't worry about it. It's a compliment. There are good vixens and monsters too, you know? I simply use those terms to describe her in a good way. You say laugh, lion ass. I'll see you later. I'm going back to the student council room, but you're going to your job, right? You really shouldn't waste your time hanging around here then. Issei leaves, calm and composed. Perhaps because he felt satisfied having said everything he wanted to say. I've known him for two years now, but honestly, I still don't get the guy. Can I drink? Can I drink? I ride the bus from school for 20 minutes. I arrive at Shinto, the neighboring town across the bridge. 
Oh, it's not even five yet. I still have some time. I don't have many part-time jobs in a residential area in Miyama, but there are plenty in Shinto since it's a developing area. A school allows students to hold part-time jobs, so I take on simple shit. I prefer my jobs to be physical, and the tougher and shorter they are, the better. I get paid all while training my body, so it's like killing two birds with one stone. Today I work from 5 to 8 o'clock from a simple loading job. It may just be three hours of work, but it feels more like six hours since they make you work without a minute's rest. Which means I need to rest when I have the opportunity, even if it's just for 10 minutes. Walking around aimlessly would be a waste of energy, so I decide to rest at a park until it's time. So it was Shiro that was staring at Tosaka. This park is nestled between buildings, and it's like a giant plaza full of trees and shrubbery. A park should typically be filled with families and couples during weekends and holidays, but this one is deserted at this hour. So with this corpse party blood drive ass music. In fairness, this place is always desolate, no matter the day or time. This place is always the same. I sigh in exasperation. The area is unkept and it's really pretty ugly compared to the other places that are properly landscaped and maintained. As if the desolate location has set the mood, the wind itself blows cold and harsh. This place is the remnant of, a gr of the great catastrophe that happened 10 years ago. It's the very place where I was saved from the brink of death. Why don't they see some grass here or something? It's a shame to keep it like this. The area is quite large, so if they leveled it, there'd be plenty of space to work on the park. I sit down on the bench as I think. With nothing else to do, I stare out over the burned area to pass the time. I don't remember anything that happened here. Only thing I remember is that it was hot and I couldn't breathe. And as some people died trying to save others. Wonder why that happened. One adult died here because they were trying to save a child from a burning house. Another person was offered all the water available to extinguish their raw parched throat, while others died in the same situation. Someone here tried to flee the fire as fast as they could, but the people left behind died, and... Someone died here because they gave whatever it was that kept them alive to someone they didn't even know. I don't like thinking about that. Just thinking about people trying to help and becoming victims for their trouble makes me angry. Is it too much to ask for everyone to be saved? For them to get their happy ending afterward? All I want to see is people is people peacefully prevail. Why can't that happen? That's a tough one. What you're saying is that you want you want you want to save everyone. That was Kirisuka's response to the question when I when a very young me asked it. As a child, I obviously refused to accept that idea. But you saved me, Kirisuga. I knew you were a magician and you could do anything. I knew you were a champion of justice who wouldn't let anyone suffer, and you did it without asking for any reward. That's why I've always believed you managed to save everyone back then. In response to me shouting this at him, Kirisuga looked more troubled than I'd ever seen him and said something I remember to this day. Shiro, saving one person means you can't save someone else. Listen. Being saved by a champion of justice only means you're one of the few they managed to reach. It might be obvious, but that's what being a champion of justice is. Yeah, I get that. And now that it's been pointing out, it seems so obvious. Imagine if there was a burglar and some hostages, and the burglar intends to kill the hostages. Under normal circumstances, the majority of the hostages would probably die. But if by some miracle all the hostages were saved, there's someone who didn't get saved. The burglar, of course. Then saving the hostages was done at the cost of his life. The people, the people the champion of justice saves are only those the champion of justice deems to save. That's why saving everyone is impossible. Even God can't do that. I don't know if I agree with that statement. Especially if it's a natural disaster. No one is able to save everyone and everything. The fire 10 years ago was like that. As someone who was miraculously saved from the incident, it wasn't my place to say anything but at this point. But I still don't like it. I don't want anything like that. I don't like the idea that there's a limitation to who can be saved. 
No matter how impossible it may be, I need to reach out to help. I can't stand to see people around me die like back then. If the person I am now had been there 10 years ago, I would have thrown myself into the fire. But then I would have died and for nothing. That would have happened for sure. Jeez, I can't even fantasize in my head. Oh crap, I can't believe it's already five. The bell in the distance rings, chiming five o'clock. I get up from the bench and hurry to my part-time job. By the time I'm done working, the sun had long since set. It's a little before eight o'clock. I finished about 10 minutes earlier because I kind of overworked myself. Maybe it's because I stopped by the park before work. That might've motivated me to push myself harder. At the train station, the night is just getting started. There are a bunch of people milling about in an endless stream of cars on the road. I uh, guess there's no need for me to get something for Fujine. I walk along the path as I gaze up at the lighted building. It's the biggest building in Shinto, so I can't see all the way to the top. As I gaze at the building, enjoying the nighttime scenery, huh? I see something bizarre. What is that? I stop and try to look to the very top. This is when we saw Tosaka. Well, this is so. To okay, so this is when. Okay, I I thought she I thought that was Shiro that Tosaka was staring at down there. I squint trying to bring what I see into focus, but it's like staring at grains of rice. It looks like someone I know, but I can't think of why this girl would have a reason to be up there. It doesn't seem like she's gonna do anything up there, but she's just standing there looking down at the city as the wind ruffles her hair. She doesn't seem to notice me below. Actually, there's no way she could see me. Even my near-perfect vision enhanced with magecraft can barely distinguish what's up there. I'm able to tell she's up there because she's isolated, but there's no way she'd be able to pick me out of a crowd on the ground. She's just looking down at the town. It seems like she's looking for something. I can almost feel her sharp gaze even at this distance. I forgot how long it's been, but I continue to look up at the girl standing in the void. She stands at the top of the tower at the, at the top of the high tower. She's like a magician, looking down at the surface world with a bright moon shining bright behind her. I imagine Shiro has like a bitch face. Like I, I imagine he has a resting bitch face. Like, like, like when he, like he's. I imagine he's kind of like me. Like I, I know y'all notice when I'm reading and I'm not really saying nothing for real. I'm just reading the dialogue. I'm always looking like. Well, that's mainly because like I be getting tired when I read a lot and because my eyes kind of hurt when I'm behind the computer for a while. That's mainly why I'm always like mean mugging because it's like it just kind of helps my it kind of makes me feel a little better. But besides that, like I do have a resting bitch face. So it's like I imagine Shiro's kind of the same way. Oh, shit. And then she disappears. Apparently done with whatever brought her up there. The rooftop stands empty, and the scenery returns back to nothing more than a beautiful night sky. Was that Tosaka up there? I can't be sure, but I'm probably right about who it was, at least. There aren't many girls I know stand out like her. And besides, I'm not so out of it I'd fail to notice a girl I secretly admire. Huh. Um... It's just that so soccer sure is a weird way of spending your time. Man, I would love to get on top of a high building and stand and stand on the on the edge like I'm fucking Superman or some shit. Like I'm Batman. I wouldn't be able to do that though. I'm scared of heights. Unlike Shinto, there's no sign of people anywhere in Miyama. There's nobody around after eight at night, and the town is silent and still. The house I saw this morning stands across the intersection. There are no signs of life and a no trespassing sign hangs over the front door. And just a single day, the house has fallen quiet, almost like an abandoned building. A girl and her parents were killed by a burglar. I wonder what life awaits now for this single child who survived. I bite my lip, frustrated by my powerlessness. I promised I'd be like Kirisugu, but I couldn't do anything. Even when something like this happened so close to home. 
I want to help people, but I don't even know what I can do. I reached the top of the hill where my house sits. The lights are on, so Fujine or Sakura are still inside. I'm home. Oh, it's just you, Fujine. Oh, welcome back, Shiro. Fujine turns towards me, munching on a rice cracker. She's not turned towards me. The TV turn is tuned to a lively variety show. You're home late again. Didn't I tell you to come home earlier since it gets dark so fast in winter? I am home early. I had to work until 8, so get off my back about that. So it's Sakura. I see Dennis already prepared. Sakura went home early. She says she had something to do today, so she just came and made dinner. Fujine cheerfully replies. As far as she's concerned, anyone who makes her food is a good person. I see. That's probably a good thing for now. It's been dangerous lately, so maybe I'll take over making dinner until the new school term starts. Objection! You come home so... <laughs> Objection! You come home so late! If you make dinner when you get back, I won't be able to eat until after 10! Uh... Couldn't you just eat at home? Dumbass! What are you talking about? This is my home! Fujine tilts her head puzzled. Honestly, I'm not sure if a response like that should make me happy or sad. Sheesh, fine. I know it's pointless asking you to make dinner. By the way, what's that you got there? You didn't bring over more junk, did you? Fujine has a tendency to leave a bunch of junk here. She'll bring stuff like bowls from restaurants that are too big to be functional and unnecessarily and unnecessarily heavy earthen teapot or a weird guitar that plays itself she must think this place is convenient storage or something show it to me i'm gonna toss it in the trash this thing it's just a poster Fujine hands me the poster it's probably a poster of some no-name singer let's see i knew it it's a poster of a young man wearing a military uniform smiling with his thumbs up all in front of a cheap looking blue sky background. The caption on the poster in a bloody font. Love's lovely ranger land. Come to the self-defense meetup. Hey, this is a recruitment poster for a youth group. I don't want it so you can have it. <coughs> I don't want this shit. I quickly rolled the poster back up and tried to whack Fujine on the head with it. Haha, <laughs> you missed! However, Fujine counters mercilessly with another poster she'd been holding. Conk. Her poster sword bops me lightly. That shit is not light! Stars! I see stars! I'm dying! You thought you were gonna hit me. You need to up your game if you ever hope to do that. Hey, that's not the issue here! How the hell does a paper poster make a sound like that? Is she meant as some sort of technique only a true poster master can execute? What the fuck? Oh, sorry, sorry. My poster is a collection edition made of a fancy, uh, made of fancy plate steel. Is your head okay, Shiro? Fujine, you're gonna fucking murder someone one of these days. If that time ever comes, it'll be, it'll be good because you'll sweep in and marry me. Fuck no. I'm not marrying a natural born killer. What? I don't think I'm that violent. You would be that unaware of your actions, wouldn't you? Pray that I survive. I'll have to be very careful from now on if I'm going to have any hopes to avoid getting murdered. Keep talking big, but now I'm hungry, Shiro. I've been waiting for so long, so let's hurry and eat now. Fujine gets up. What's up with Fujine? She must be really hungry and she's offering to help, even if it's just help setting the table. Fine. You take out the bowl, you take out the place in bowls. You can at least scoop the rice in the bowls, right? 
You got that much skill. Of course I can. Hey, do you think it'd be okay if I use a bigger rice ball? That shouldn't be a problem. Sakura's not here today, so we'll definitely have leftovers. Good, good. Then you and I will have matching bowls today. Fujine scoops mounds of rice into two large bowls. Whatever. I was gonna go for a second helping anyway, and if I meddle with what Fujine is doing now, we may really not have any dinner. Besides, this is the kind of chaotic scene dinner at my home has been for years. Another day ends. We finish our rowdy dinner, and after I see Fujine off, I take a bath. After that, I head to the shed for my daily training. Complete it as usual, then go to sleep. It's one o'clock in the morning. The day ends peacefully and without incident. Something fucking terrible is gonna happen tomorrow. I'm in a fire! Long day, long night. Oh, hell no. Nah. This shit finna be long as fuck. Not longer than my. Hold on. That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment, or read them all, tap into the next one. Um, yo. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna just keep saying the same crap over and over. So, like, I mean, I'm gonna just say it one more time. The game is interesting. I'm really liking it. The story's cool. The characters are cool. So, I think Misa Zuri might actually be my favorite character so far. I don't know why. Misuzuri and um Who is that? Misuzuri and Issei. They might be my favorite character so far. But um after them is probably Fuji. Fuji Fujine and um Sakura. I don't wanna really count Shiro or Tosaka because they seem to be the main characters. You know, so I'm I, I know obviously I like them, but they're the main characters, so I don't really want to count them as who I think are the favorites, you know? Like I play as them. But those are my favorite characters so far. Uh, by the way, I'm a, I have a Discord as well. I'm going to link it down here. I'm, I might tweak it a little bit first, but I'm going to link my Discord in the description. So y'all can go and click on that if y'all are interested in like knowing, when, knowing the second I drop a video. All of that. Y'all want to communicate and stuff. It ain't really jumping right now because I don't really have nobody in there, but... You know, I just really want, I just really want like um a community. Like I want to talk to y'all. I want to be able to communicate with y'all. Y'all already see like, dang there, every time you comment, <laughs> I have a little, I have a like and a reply ready for you. So honestly, I, I would, I would really like it a lot more if, you know, we could like actually talk in Discord and you know, and I also really want to get into some things with my community. Like, you know, going on Discord or maybe, like maybe even recording a video and Maybe even recording a video while having the a stream up on Discord. People can talk and communicate with me and watch the recording live, you know? Like even things like that. I, I, I would love to get into stuff like that too, but I gotta have people in the Discord first. So come into Discord, you know, you can talk to me. You can talk to some of my friends who also create content. You know, if you was here watching my Course Party Book of Shadows series, then like, hey, Sonny's in there too. You can talk to him, you know? Um, but peace out. I love y'all. Tap in.